It was just a lie. I can't fly. I can't even run. Crows are all liars. I know a story about a crow. 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 In A Song of Ice and Fire, Bran is visited several times in his dreams by a mysterious crow with a third eye atop its head. It's not until the fifth book, A Dance with Dragons, that we finally see his true form. Deep within the earth beneath an ancient werewood tree he waits. Though his body has withered with extreme age, he is kept alive by the werewood, which he himself has become a part of. The roots of the tree have grown through him. His body is so skeletal and pale that Bran mistakes him for a corpse the first time he sees him. Bloodraven actually has quite a history. He's actually a Targaryen bastard that was born well over a hundred years before Bran was born. He was sent to the Wall by King Aegon V late in the year 233 AC for killing Aenys Blackfire while under safe conduct, even though effectively he ended the Blackfire Rebellion by doing so. Bloodraven remains a member of the Night's Watch for 19 years. He even becomes Lord Commander before he mysteriously vanishes beyond the Wall in 252 AC. He's never seen or heard from again. We know for sure that Bloodraven appears in the dreams of at least two characters in our story, Bran and Jojen Reed. And if you've seen my Understanding the Birth of Dragons video, then you know that I believe that he also may have visited Danny in a similar way, but with less effect, possibly due to distance. At the wall, Melisandre sees Bloodraven in her flames. She obviously senses his power because at first she confuses him with the Great Other himself. She wondered if it had been his face that she had seen, staring out at her from the flames. No, surely not. His visage would be more frightening than that, cold and black, and too terrible for any man to gaze upon and live. The wooden man she had glimpsed, though, and the boy with the wolf's face, they were his servants, surely. It's important to note that Bloodraven can also see Melisandre, and this seems to frighten her. A face took shape within the hearth. Stannis, she thought, for just a moment. But no, these were not his features. A wooden face, corpse white. Was this the enemy? A thousand red eyes floated in the flames. He sees me. Beside him, a boy with a wolf's face threw back his head and howled. The red priestess shuddered. Some have theorized that Bloodraven uses crows to watch the world outside of his cave but I don't think he's limited to them. According to Melisandre, he can see her through the flames, and there were no ravens or crows present. Even before he was sent to the wall, Bloodraven was thought by many to be a sorcerer, and there is reason to believe that he had been a powerful skin changer even before he disappeared beyond the wall. How many eyes does Lord Bloodraven have? The riddle ran. A thousand eyes in one. Some claim the king's hand was a student of the dark arts who could change his face, put on the likeness of a one-eyed dog, even turn into mist. Packs of gaunt gray wolves hunted down his foes, men said, and carrion crows spied for him and whispered secrets in his ear. We know that the children of the forest can use werewood trees to watch the world as well. Could it be that the combination of the two leads to enhanced ability? So if he's so powerful, then what does he need with Bran? In the prologue of A Dance with Dragons, we get a glimpse into the mind of a dying ward by the name of Varamyr Sixskins. As he contemplates his life, he is comforted only by the fact that he knows he will live a second life through his wolf. But when his companion, Thistle, whom he thought had abandoned him, returns out of desperation, he attempts to inhabit her body and force her out of her own skin. This seems to set up Jon Snow's resurrection in the books quite nicely. But what if Jon Snow is a red herring? We know that Bloodraven is at least 120 years old, and the werewood gives him life. Still, he seems to be withering. Could he want to steal Bran's body? Seems interesting, but then why is Bloodraven showing Bran his past through the trees? Well, he could just be buying time for the werewood to become more connected to Bran. Once Bran had spent enough time being one with the werewood, it would likely be easier for Bloodraven to steal Bran's body. But why would Bloodraven be doing this? Well, I don't think he has very much control over the situation. 
it's the children of the forest who are the culprits here. So that may mean that Bloodraven isn't attempting to steal Bran's body at all. Maybe Bran is simply his replacement. Why would Brendan Rivers, the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, end up in a cave surrounded by the children of the forest beyond the wall? We know that Bloodraven had an interest in magic. I have suggested before that the children may have lured him into the cave the same way that he lured Bran. And once he was there, they used him for his power. If Bloodraven can see Melisandre without the presence of a raven or a werewood tree, what else can he see? After the invasion of the Andals, all the werewood trees not in the north were chopped down. This would certainly lower the power of the children, as they used them to watch mankind. It seems as though the children could be using Bloodraven's power as simply a tool for their own agenda. The children have a plot, one that's been decades in the making. If you've seen my videos, The Origin of the Others and Why We Can't Trust the Children, then you know that I believe that initially some of the children broke off from the group and became the others. When things went too far, the remaining children that didn't become the others helped the first men defeat the others. Though they did seem hesitant, only waiting till mankind was at its most desperate to intervene, even though they clearly knew how to defeat the others. Could the reluctance have been due to the fact that they knew the others were kin to them? It's hinted in the books that the children may have some trouble reproducing as well, much like the others seem to. The gods gave us long lives but not great numbers, lest we overrun the world as deer will overrun a wood where there are no wolves to hunt them. The long night was 8,000 years ago, before the Andals invaded and nearly finished off the children of the forest completely. Now the others are returning again, and I believe this is because the remaining children have decided to join the side with the remaining others to take back Westeros from humanity. The attacks of the others are fairly recent. Seemingly they started within the last few years, but Craster has been sacrificing his sons to the White Walkers for decades it seems. And in a storm of swords before Sam escapes Craster's keep, one of the wives referred to the others as Craster's sons. This could imply that Craster's sons are being turned into White Walkers, and I think it does. But wait, I thought the children of the forest were the ones who became the White Walkers. Yes they were, but as A Dance with Dragons mentions, they are almost completely gone now. They likely couldn't risk it after what happened last time, so they used Craster's sons instead. The White Walkers aren't a threat to the children it seems. They clearly have magical protection against them, and we know that the children hunted with dragon glass daggers long before men arrived in Westeros. Since the children have to use humans this time, it makes sense that they would need a human in order to control them. This would seem to be the purpose of Bloodraven. Bloodraven's power is now a part of the Weirwood. His mind may be under the control of the children as well. He is their prisoner, mind and body. But only for as long as the Weirwood can extend his life. That's why they needed Bran. Skin changers as powerful as Bran or Bloodraven don't come along very often. The children have every reason to want to reclaim what is theirs. Men have brought nothing but destruction and horror to the world. The White Walkers are the children's tool against humanity, and they have every reason and right to want mankind gone. Where are the rest of you? Bran asked Leaf once. Gone. Down into the earth, into the stones, into the trees. Before the first men came, all this land you call Westeros was home to us. Yet even in those days we were few. The gods gave us long lives, but not great numbers, lest we overrun the world as deer will overrun a wood where there are no wolves to hunt them. That was in the dawn of days, when our sun was rising. Now it sinks, and this is our long dwindling. The giants are almost gone as well. They who are our bane and our brothers. The great lions of the western hills have been all but slain. The unicorns are gone. The mammoths down to a few hundred. The direwolves will outlast us all. But their time will come as well. And the world that men have made. There is no more room for them. Or us. Thank you guys for watching, make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos for more ideas of ice and fire. In that darkness, 
The others came for the first time. They were cold things, dead things that hated iron and fire and the touch of the sun and every creature with hot blood in its veins. They swept over holdfasts and cities and kingdoms, felled heroes and armies by the score, 